So that's my fixer upper. I'm Andrew if you're new to the channel and a few years ago I bought the ugliest house in Maryland. And if you don't believe me, here's exhibit A. And that was just the outside. If we move into the dark, scary basement, it doesn't get much better. Now, fortunately, I already finished most of the basement in a previous video, but after learning on the internet that adding a bathroom to my basement could add 20% or more to my home's value, I knew that I'd be leaving a bunch of money on the table if I did not add a bathroom to my basement. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it from start to finish. So here's a look at where this project starts. And as you can see, I already taped on the floor the locations for the walls based on my preliminary sketch. And now we just need to figure out how we're gonna get our drain plumbing to our main sewer stack right here. Obviously this involved demolishing the existing slab and if you're going to go through the permitting process you're going to need a licensed plumber to do this plumbing work. Now this under slab rough and plumbing was the only part of this bathroom that I outsourced so I promise we'll get back to DIY in just a minute. Here they had to dig down deep to actually make that connection to the existing sewer pipe that's going out to the road and after getting the pipe in with the proper slope they backfilled with some concrete. And what's awkward is I actually ended up finding a jackhammer on Craigslist that I bought like a week after this was done so I probably could have saved some money by doing this myself but what are you gonna do now moving back in the bathroom that's where the toilet's gonna be over to the left of that is where the tub is going to be that's gonna be the tub drain and then if we move up that two inch line right there that's the sink drain but before the plumber can do anything with that tub i need to frame this back wall these basement bathroom walls are going to be framed 16 inch on center with a pressure treated bottom plate since we're in a basement after measuring the stud height i laid out the wall on the floor nailed the bottom plate to the bottom of the studs and then did the same thing for the top plate to the top of the studs spacing the studs 16 inches on center next i lifted the wall into place confirmed that it was plumb and then I attach the bottom plate to the concrete floor using a carbide tip masonry bit to pre-drill and then some tapcon screws to screw it in place. Also highly recommend these tinted safety glasses inside. Next, double check your walls plumb, install shims as needed, and secure the top plate to the ceiling joist above. To frame around the support beam in the center of the bathroom, I used two by six lumber and positioned it on either side of the post so that I can install some drywall around it later. Then after framing around that support column, I moved onto the back wall of the tub, got that in place, and then my plumber came back and hooked up the drain piping as you can see here. To frame around the pipes and HVAC ducts in my basement bathroom, I went with my trusty OSB rail method, but you can do this a million different ways. And the last part of the framing process is to cut out the bottom plates for any doors using a salt Now, as I was admiring these beautifully framed walls, I noticed that the concrete around the toilet flange was incredibly uneven, so I'm gonna have to fix that using some self-leveling underlayment to get the floors perfectly level. To do that, I first primed the floors, then I mixed up the self-leveling underlayment product before dumping it out over the uneven surface, spreading it around a bit, and letting it do its thing and self-level. And after the tub was set, I installed this composite shower surround, which basically looks like subway tile, and it comes in two pieces that you interlock together before securing it directly to the studs. For the shower valve and the tub spout, I had to drill those penetrations, and I did that using a hole saw bit. And as I install the rest of the shower surround, I do wanna let you know that my free ebook down below has every material that I installed listed so you can reference it later. Now for the electrical in this basement bathroom, I had a dedicated 20 amp circuit that was added specifically for my basement bathroom. So to summarize, we have the incoming power feed going to a GFCI outlet, which is going to protect the light switch and the downstream fixtures that we're going to install later. Now let's move on to my least favorite part of this basement bathroom addition, the drywall. Hanging the drywall is not so bad. You're just going to lift it into place and secure it to the studs every 16 inches on center or so. I'm using the green drywall in the bathroom since that is mold resistant and and to cut around pipes or outlets, you can use a drill, you can use a router, or you can use a jab saw. Here's a look at me installing the drywall around that HVAC bulkhead, which was pretty intricate, but not too bad. And here are the final pieces of drywall that I installed in the bathroom. Now, as I said before, hanging drywall, not a problem. Finishing drywall, big problem, at least for me. I'm not good at it and it takes me forever. So the process of skimming, taping, installing the corner bead, sanding, basically everything about it, I don't enjoy. So if I was gonna do this again, I would definitely outsource the drywall finishing and it would probably only cost a couple hundred bucks. I think it's money well spent. But since I did it myself, I now have the privilege of removing about, you know, three tons of drywall dust from the bathroom. But after removing the drywall dust from the walls, I was able to paint. And once I completed the painting process, I could start installing the floors. I installed luxury vinyl plank flooring in my basement bathroom. And because it's a floating floor, you want to install some quartering spacers around the room to allow for some expansion and contraction. LVP has a groove edge and a tongue edge that interlock during the installation to form a watertight seal. Install the long edge just like that and for the short edge slide it in place and then interlock the two pieces using a rubber mallet to cut lvp measure mark score flip 
snap along the score line, and then cut the underlayment on the other side before installing. And I bought this LVP installation kit on Amazon, which came with this tapping block. Now over to the left here, you can see that we have a furnace, which is right next to our bathroom. We're going to need access to that in the future, but we also want some privacy. So I installed this accordion door to separate the furnace from the bathroom. And although it's a little bit tacky, it works. I continued with the LVP installation between the tub and the wall until we got to the toilet drain pipe, which I then marked and then cut out the center using a drill before cutting out the circumference using a jigsaw. After cutting the penetration for the toilet pipe, I slipped it over the pipe and interlocked it with the piece installed previously. For the final piece, I had to cut off a bit of the width and to do that I measured and then cut it to the required width using a circular saw. Then I vacuumed up any debris, slipped the piece in place, and then used this pull bar that came with the LVP installation kit to pull it in place. We're going to go back and install baseboards around the bathroom in a minute, but right now let's install the LED bathroom mirror. I got this LED mirror on Amazon and I'll link it down below, but we have our power feed coming through the wall and obviously we need to install a legit gang box around that. So I cut the penetration using a jab saw and as a summary, we have the incoming power and then the downstream power, which is going to go to the puck lights and the exhaust fan. After feeding the cables through the gang box, I tightened up the wings, which are going to pull it tight to the drywall. And here's a look at the bracket, which the LED mirror is going to hang on. At this point, I made the electrical connection and I tucked the wires back into the game box. Then it was simply a matter of hanging the LED mirror on the bracket. Now for my basement bathroom, I decided to build this custom modern looking barn door. I'm gonna show you how to build that right now, but if you're just gonna install a standard door, you can skip this segment. So to build this modern barn door, I started by measuring the door height, and then I took this solid core door that I bought from Home Depot and ripped it down to the appropriate height. After marking the center, I took this peel and stick veneer, which is made by Reno Board, and then I started by removing the adhesive backing, cutting it at a 45 degree angle to create this chevron pattern using a carpenter square, and then just gluing it into place on top of the door. I did this for the front and then again for the back, and then I cut off any excess that was overhanging using a utility knife. After cutting the veneer flush with the door, I then ripped down this piece of wood that I'm going to use for the door's casing to cover up the veneer, and I mitered the edges to give myself a nice clean casing before attaching them to the door with adhesive and brad nails. After caulking the gaps and painting the trim black, I then removed the tape that I used to make sure the lines were clean, and now it's time to install the actual barn door hardware. I assembled the barn door rail using the included hardware, then I determined the height in which I was going to mount it before actually installing the track using the lag screws that came with the kit. After installing the track, it was time to install the roller brackets, which are going to go on the door, and these are going to ride on top of the rail that we just installed. After screwing those together, I drilled the holes for the door handle, then I attached that using the provided hardware before lifting the door, positioning it on the track, and giving it a test to make sure that everything was moving along smoothly. Once I was happy with how it was rolling along, I installed the guides at the bottom of the door that are going to ensure that the door stays on the proper travel path. Now at this point, let's go back in the bathroom and install the toilet. Now if we rewind a bit, you'll remember that we have a three inch stub up for the toilet here. And because we're installing a 10 inch rough in toilet, I positioned the back wall 10 and a half inches from the center of the pipe, because once we add the half inch drywall, that'll be 10 inches away from the wall. Now, as far as the supply piping, the contractor installed half inch CPVC, which is gonna connect to the toilet fill valve. In terms of where to position this, move it six inches over and then seven inches up where you want to position that pipe through the wall. I had to cut off the cap here so I could install the half inch angle valve, which is going to connect to the supply hose. After cutting the pipe, I deburred any of the rough edges and then I applied some PVC primer and CPVC glue and pushed the angle valve into place. I like to hold the valve for around 15 to 30 seconds just to make sure that solvent weld is strong. Next up, I cut the three inch drain pipe for the toilet using a reciprocating saw and made sure it was flush with a concrete slab. Then I pre-drilled the holes for the toilet flange, which once done is going to allow me to take some Tapcon screws and secure the toilet flange to the concrete slab. To do this, I used a hammer drill and a carbide tip masonry bit. After pre-drilling the holes, I vacuumed up any dust. Then I applied primer to the inside of the pipe as well as the outside of the closet flange. Then I took some PVC glue, applied it around the closet flange and the inside of the pipe, positioned the closet flange in place, making sure the penetrations were above the screw holes, then secured the closet flange to the slab using Tapcon screws. For my basement bathroom toilet, I went with a wax-free toilet seal and I started by installing the Johnny bolts before putting in the washer, getting those in place, and then I installed the wax-free seal on top of it. 
After getting everything positioned properly, I took the toilet, made sure that it was seating properly on top of the wax-free seal, and once I was content, I installed the washer, tightened it down with the nut, and I used shims as necessary to get the toilet bowl perfectly level. Once the toilet bowl was in place, I took the tank, inserted it on top of the toilet bowl, and then secured it underneath using the bolts that came with the toilet. After confirming level, I hooked up the supply line, and I highly recommend that you flush the line before connecting it to your toilet, just to make sure all the dirt and debris is out. After connecting the supply line to the bottom of the toilet tank, I cut off the excess bolt length on the toilet base and install the decorative cap. Then I turned on the water supply going to the toilet tank, let it fill up, and after giving it time to fill, I flushed the toilet to test that everything was functioning properly and that we didn't have any leaks on the tank and also on the bottom of the toilet. After confirming that we did not have any leaks, thankfully, I installed the toilet tank, installed the escutcheon around the supply line, installed the toilet seat, and then it's optional to apply silicone around the base of the toilet. And now that we have the LVP flooring and the toilet in place, I identified the stud locations and applied baseboards around the perimeter of the bathroom. And to seal the gap between the tub and the LVP, I caulked. To install a drop ceiling in a basement bathroom, you first wanna establish a level line across the top of your ceiling. And this line is gonna be used as a reference to install your border panels and make sure they're perfectly level all the way across. These border panels are gonna be installed using a self-tapping metal screw going into the studs. And these border panels are gonna support the drop ceiling around the perimeter of the room. To cut the border panels, use some tin snips as shown. For the inside corners, you can either butt the two border panel pieces together as shown here, but in my case, I like to overlap one over the other as shown. And for the outside corners, it's recommended that you miter the border panels at a 45 degree angle using tin snips, and then you're gonna match the two 45 degree angles up to each other to create that 90 degree outside corner. Continue to install the border panels around the entire perimeter of your basement bathroom, and once the border panels are in place, you can start planning out the actual grid layout for your drop ceiling. For this, I recommend that you use some graph paper. And here's a quick photo of a sample layout. Feel free to pause the video. But I also recommend if you're gonna install any kind of soundproofing insulation, do that before you install the grid. Now, to support the grid, we're installing something here called Quick Hang Hardware, and that's proprietary to the Armstrong drop ceiling. And once you have those in place, you're going to cut your main beam, position one side on top of the border panels, and then support it in the center using the Quick Hang Hardware. After getting your main beam installed, you're going to take the cross tees and you're going to start assembling the grid. The openings in the main beam are 24 inches apart, so it's going to match up with a 24 by 24 inch ceiling panel, and then you're going to click each of the cross tees into the main beam. Then confirm your grid is level. Now, unlike other drop ceiling panels, these are made out of PVC, so they're not going to get all yellow and discolored at the first sign of water. And because this basement bathroom is so small, most of the full-size drop ceiling panels received a recessed light as you're seeing now, so I cut out the penetration using a utility knife and the template. Then I made the electrical connection before pushing the drop ceiling panel into place and testing the light. Then I repeated this process for all the rest of the drop ceiling panels that required a recessed light. Next, I measured the size of the border panels, then cut them to length to the appropriate size using a utility knife and a straight edge. To cut those full panels, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna score and snap along the cut line, and then you're gonna install them up in the grid. As you can see right here, I had to cut out the penetration for the exhaust fan, and to install that, I first positioned it in place to make sure it'd be right on top of the drop ceiling panels, then I installed the mounting screws and then mounted the exhaust fan in place. After getting it mounted, I made the electrical connections and now it's time to worry about the ducting. First, I hooked up the exhaust fan discharge duct by taking the four inch flexible foil duct and attaching it to the manifold that attaches to the exhaust fan. After clicking that in place, I took the discharge end and I ran it through the bathroom to the discharge, which is gonna go through the CMU wall in my foundation. If you have a good hammer drill, drilling through this cinder block is gonna be no problem at all, as long as you're on hammer function and you hold the drill nice and level. And here's a quick look at me completely completing that core drill on the inside of my basement. After drilling the penetration, I took my vent discharge kit and I started assembling that according to the manufacturer's recommendations. As you can see, I'm using some foil tape to make sure the connection is secure. And then you're gonna run that four inch hard pipe duct through the house before securing the discharge vent to the house using a carbide tip masonry bit to pre-drill and then Tapcon screws to secure it in place. After weatherproofing the exterior of that hood, I went on the inside and applied some expanding spray foam insulation just to seal up that penetration. Then I connected the four inch flexible hose to the four inch hard pipe duct that goes outside the house. And then I completed the rest of the exhaust fan and the drop ceiling installation. At this point, we grabbed the vanity that we're gonna be installing in this basement bathroom and we slid it into place. We started with the base and then we took the top of the vanity and positioned it over top. To install the 
faucet handles, start by caulking the underside, then position them in place and tighten the lock screw on the bottom. Then I completed a similar process for the actual faucet, tightening everything up underneath. To connect the faucet spout to the handles, it came with push-on connections, so you're gonna take the hose and push them into place using the quick connects and you should hear a click once it's attached properly. And you can gently pull down on the hose to test. Next, flush out the lines to remove any dirt or debris and then connect the faucet handles to the supply valves that we installed previously. Next, we're going to install the sink drain assembly and this starts by putting some silicone on the underside of the flange and then threading in the tailpipe that goes on the bottom before tightening everything up from underneath. With the tailpiece in place, it's time to install the trap adapter and after gluing that in with PVC glue, you're gonna take your P-trap, install these slip nuts and slip washers and then assemble the whole P-trap assembly together. After tightening everything everything up, I moved to the top of the vanity and I cut the three pieces of backsplash stone to the required size and then I caulked the base, positioned those in place to kind of create that three piece surround to prevent water from going over the back and the sides. Then I caulked along the wall and also between the backsplash and the vanity. Finally, give the sink a test, make sure the water is functioning properly with hot and cold, and make sure you don't have any leaks on the underside. And at this point, we're at the home stretch of this basement bathroom addition, and all that's left to do is install the tub spout, install the shower head, install the trim kit for the shower valve, and after tightening that up, you're gonna install the handle, and then you're gonna caulk the top and sides of the shower valve. Leave the bottom open so any trap moisture can escape. Then, go back and caulk the tub surround as required, and if you're not great with caulking, you can use the old tape trick. All right, y'all, let's take a quick reminder look at where this project started. And here's a look at the final result. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below. It helps me out with the algorithm and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you like this type of DIY content. Finally, as a reminder, I have a free ebook down below that has every material that I installed in this bathroom listed and also gives you a cost breakdown so you know how much to budget for your basement bathroom edition. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing y'all on the next one. Thanks.